Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my video. All right, I just want to give you guys a quick fix if you guys are in this situation. So a couple of days ago, I had this situation come up with my car. Previous to that, I had no issues. Car was driving fine. Matter of fact, it's been driving fine since I had it. The only thing that I actually had to change out within the last year was the battery. Uh, other than that, I really had no uh, issues whatsoever. So I was driving all day, um, went into supermarket, got some cherry ice cream. Love cherry ice cream. Got like two tubs of it, came out and was, was all ready to go home and have some good old ice cream in the hot summer and it's it cranked but it wouldn't start cranked it wouldn't and it wouldn't start so i was thinking to myself oh wow okay so this is a situation it's not the worst situation i'm getting power to everything the ac the ac no the ac wasn't working because the car wasn't turning on but the blow motor was working the uh, radio worked everything uh worked but it just will not just would not turn it would not it would not run it wouldn't run it would the, it wouldn't run so here's this uh situation uh, I'm, I'm I'm stuck with two tubs of ice cream. It's it's like 95 degrees out, and I didn't want to waste ice cream. I didn't want to waste ice cream, so I'm like, all right, let me just do a quick see if I can do a quick fix on this. Hopefully, it was a quick fix. Some maybe some weird thing. So I just kept on cranking it. I crank kept on cranking it like six, seven, eight times, hoping that it would start. It, w it, it wouldn't start. So I was like, okay, so this might be more of a, a serious situation because I was I was trying to get into neutral and all the other gears and try starting in neutral and it, it didn't work. So I was thinking to myself, okay, hopefully it's not something too bad because th there's no check engine light on the dash, okay? There's no check engine light on the dash. I, I was hoping it wasn't too bad. So... And and I and, and, and I specifically caught that there was no check engine light um on the dash. Didn't see any kind of red check engine light on the dash. So I was like nice to meet you. All right. Okay. All right. Let's uh let's get to the battery and see if there's any issue with the battery because it was changed out six months ago. Normally batteries last for four years and it shouldn't go out within six months. Within a year. So I was thinking to myself hopefully so then can I get your it's something that's yeah, sure. kind of simple. Maybe there's a little, Caitlin? Caitlin? Hi, yeah. I love your a little uh, corrosion love on the terminals. Maybe it wasn't tightened. Right, Maybe there was some play yeah, in, on the terminal. So I was like, okay, got to the battery and yeah, so cute. everything looked good. Everything looked good. Cool. The terminal you. looked good. Too, it was tight. Sorry. I wiggled it. It wouldn't wiggle. The there was, I, as far as I could tell, there was no corrosion on the terminals whatsoever. And I did also make sure to check the negative line that went to the frame, make sure it's connected, make sure it's no, make sure it's no corrosion, etc., etc., etc. And I was like, okay. Now I couldn't be 100% sure that it was in the battery. All the cranks that I was hearing were strong cranks. Now normally if the battery is kind of weak, I would hear like a weak crank, but I cranked it up like eight times and. Every single time, it seemed to be really strong. So I was like, let me check this out further. Maybe I'll just turn on the lights, hey, the headlights, and see if it's uh, if it's bright. So and the headlights were bright. So I was like, I was like, here's the problem. You're so hot. All right. Oh the battery seems to be good. Thank you. Now, we hang out sometime? obviously at this point, I'm thinking... 99% sure it's not the battery, like 99% sure it's not the battery. But I was thinking to myself, what if it could be the battery? You know, because I got to get this ice cream home. What if it could be the battery? All right, because it's 90 degrees out and there's no AC. All the windows are down. Ice cream is melting. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, I do have a jumper pack. That I do have a jumper pack. One of those no coats that I got from Walmart, like when I when I had that battery issue. 
about a year ago. So I hooked it up. It was 75% loaded. Turn on. Try to start the car. Same thing. Nothing. No. It was a crank. No start. Same strong crank. No start. So I, I at that point, I ruled out the battery 100%. 100% percent I ruled it out so basically I got back in my car really hot and I was thinking I got to throw out this ice cream but you know it's like you know I'm like 15 minutes into this hot weather and got ice cream it's gonna be melted within like 40 minutes <clears throat> that's what I was thinking all right it was it was pretty soft at you know, so I was like, maybe I should eat this ice cream. Maybe I just eat some of it and then throw some of it. But wait, uh, I'm I'm getting off track right now. But but I was thinking to myself, maybe it's the crankshaft, maybe it's the camshaft, maybe it's the mass airflow sensor, maybe it's all those, any of those things, any of those things with a sensor, and maybe it could be all those things. And I and I record to myself, I record to myself. You know what? There was no check engine light. I, I, I remember looking at the dash. I remember looking at the dash for whatever reason. For, you know, I remember looking at the dash and I didn't recall a check engine light because I would have noticed it. All right. And if any of those components, the mass airflow sensor, the crankshaft, the camshaft, uh, uh you know the the throttle position. If any of those sensors, any of the you know any of those vents, sensors had any issues whatsoever, for the most part, like ninety nine percent of the time, if any of those sensors has issues, there's a good chance ninety nine percent of the time that the check engine light will illuminate or at least blink. Now I didn't have an OBD two scanner on me to to scan it all the way through, so I don't know that. 100% for a fact, but I know that I could probably rule out most of those things. Rule out most of, most of those things, though. At that point, I was like, I, I was I, 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 I was sitting in my car, it was hot, I was thinking about calling AAA, and at that point, I was like, let me just eat some ice cream. I ate some ice cream. I ate some ice cream, I filled my stomach up, trying to figure out what could be the cause of it. It could be it could be a bunch of things, but but I'm gonna go. I was going through the most obvious things that it could be. It could be, you know, after 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 ruling out the battery, after ruling out all the sensors because there was no check engine light. I was thinking, here's here's what I could. Here's here's what's left. All right, the fuel pump, the fuel pump relay, the fuel pill filter. It's either not getting fuel or it's something electrical like a blown fuse or blown relay. Now, my next step was I went and checked the, the, the fuses and the relays. Now, all the, all the fuses look good. I didn't have a fuse tester on me, but I looked at the, the fuse box just to make sure none of the, nothing looked like it was brownish or burnt or, or, or any of that nature. And none of it looked burnt. I didn't smell any kind of burnt coming from it. So I was like, maybe it's the fuel pump. It could be the fuel pump. Maybe it's the fuel pump relay. One of those things may have gone out. So I was thinking, I, I got back in my car. I tried to start. I actually tried to um, start my car, trying to listen to see whether there's priming at, at the fuel pump. Now, funny enough, funny enough, you know, I was able to hear some buzzing when I turn the key to the, to the on position. All right, the on position is the position before the crank. All right, it's before the crank, turn it to the on position a couple of times, turn it off, turn it to the on position, turn it off, turn it to the on position a couple of times. And I was sitting in my car with my ice cream, melting ice cream. I had a plastic spoon. I was eating ice cream and it was really good. And I was thinking to myself, I was thinking to myself, all right, you know, I could hear the fuel pump, like a whizzing motorized sound from the fuel pump. I could hear it. And at that point, I was able to rule out two things. I was able to rule out the relay. I was able to rule out the fuel pump. Now, I couldn't rule out the fuel filter, 
or, or, or the fuel injectors, any of that stuff. But there's a there's like a 90% chance that the fuel pump worked, the fuel filter worked. And if there's anything that's causing issues with the fuel delivery into the engine, it would it would start up and it would die out. It would start up a little bit and would die out. So I, I was I was able to rule all those things out. The fuse, the fuses. Now I. I didn't have any testers on me, so I wasn't a hundred percent sure that it was any that that it couldn't be any of those things. It wasn't like like I would need to to test it out to say it's a hundred percent that any one of those components could be causing uh, the crank no start issue. So I was sitting back in eating ice cream, eating ice cream, eating ice cream. I I got to like half a tub left, and I was like. I'm gonna have to throw this out. Probably should car triple A, and and then I had I had like a little bit of an epiphany. I was thinking to myself, you know what? I I got, like I had this issue maybe five years <coughs> five years ago on another vehicle. Ran through a lot of the tests, but had it told. And and funny thing is. It turned out to be nothing more. I spent money on towing at that at that point, and it turned out that it was it was something that was pretty simple. It was something as simple as the key fob or the key key fob itself uh, not being picked up or recognized by the car's computer, or it was the key fob battery. Now, I've never changed the key fob battery since I had this car and I wasn't 100% sure whether it was the key fob battery that could be causing the situation, but there is a chance the key fob battery could be causing the situation, particularly if you rule out all the things that I ruled out. So, at that point, I was thinking to myself, you know what? Um... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take the key fob battery out because I can't tell 100% whether that's causing the issue. But I went back into the supermarket. All right, I took the battery out of the key fob itself, the remote. Got a battery, popped it in, and I was crossing my fingers that it was it was it was something as simple as that because I had no issues with the vehicle previous to that except for changing out the battery and guess what guys once I got in and 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 try to start it it cranked up it cranked up immediately it's cranked up ever since I've had no issues whatsoever since I've had no issues whatsoever since it's as simple as that so a lot of times well, yeah, a lot of times, you know, it could be one of the components that I went through, but sometimes it could be that as simple as your key fob battery that's causing the issue. So if you guys are in this situation, I'm sure you guys are, if you guys are watching this and you guys want to rule out something that be, could be causing your crank no start situation, and you guys want a very, very, very quick fix, definitely, definitely try this out. Okay, take the key, especially if you guys haven't changed the key fob battery in a while, take the key fob battery out and go to your local, wherever it is, CVS, and any place that sells these little flat batteries, buy yourself uh, one of these batteries, replace it, pop it in, and try to start it. If it starts up, then you're 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 all in the clear. Now, obviously, if you guys are still having a crack no start situation, then that's another uh, issue. But if you guys are in that situation, you guys could probably rule out this key fob, uh, low key fob battery or or dead battery on your key fob situation, uh, which is definitely worth it to do. Because if you guys are in this situation where you guys are trying, trying to troubleshoot uh, issues, etc., etc., um, this is probably one of the things that get to a lot of people or get to most people. Because 
when they come across this issue, they think that it's probably a component in the car that's that's causing it, and they won't actually go to uh, other scenarios that might be causing it that has really nothing to do with the electrical or mechanical working of the car, but instead. Uh, it's probably related to something that they wouldn't normally think or would be causing an issue like that. But anyway, I hope you guys have, uh, I, I hope this helps you guys out, you guys in this situation. And I hope you guys have this uh, fixed. It's as simple as this. All right, if you guys have a comment, please uh, definitely leave a comment in the comment section. Please subscribe, please give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff, right guys? Take care.